Omicron variant of COVID-19 continues to spread across the Austin area and that how long this public health threat will be around depends on you. CBS Austin's Fred Cantu has been looking at the numbers and joins us live. And Fred, we know members of the UT COVID-19 Modeling Consortium are expecting local COVID hospitalizations to keep rising. Yeah, for the folks who are just uh, waking up, in the last half hour we were talking about that uh, the Omicron variant of uh, COVID is uh, less severe, so fewer people who get COVID now end up in the hospital. But it is so much more contagious and so many more people are getting COVID right now that the number of people going to the hospital for COVID actually is still rising. And this chart from Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center compares the current spike in COVID-19 cases in Texas with the uptick in COVID hospitalizations. The upswing in hospitalizations doesn't appear to be as severe. And because so many people believe their illness with the Omicron COVID will be no big deal, health Health experts worry that we won't put in the work necessary to contain the spread quickly. If we as a community um, band together and change our behavior and start um, taking precautionary behaviors like wearing masks and social distancing and avoiding non-essential activities, um, I think we could see a peak over the next week or two. Um, however, if things keep spreading as they are without the significant behavioral changes that we know are needed to slow the transmission, um, it could be a few weeks to, to a month before we see a peak. And that would be bad news for Texas ICUs, which have been more than 80 percent occupied since across the state since July and not much breathing room left there. Also, the modelers say it's been proven over and over again that areas that have higher COVID vaccination rates will see fewer COVID hospitalizations and just overall better outcomes. So the time to vaccinate is now. We're live here near the University of Texas. Fred Cantu, CBS Austin News. With COVID-19 already causing complications in the classroom, health officials advise getting vaccinated against both viruses. CBS Austin's Paige Hubbard joins us live after she spoke to a local doctor about flu Rona. Paige, they tell you a large number coming back now positive with two illnesses. Walt, 80% of patients here at Dell Children's Medical Center are co-infected with COVID and the flu or some other virus. And tonight, one parent is sharing why she didn't think twice getting her children vaccinated for both. I think they were really both very nervous about catching Corona. So when they had the opportunity to get the vaccine, they asked me for it. Austinite Susan Mack says her two children jumped at the opportunity to get their COVID and influenza shots. Mack adds there wasn't much concern because her family has been getting vaccinated for the flu since they were babies. The one year they didn't get their flu shot, she says the experience was so miserable, she felt the side effects of getting the vaccine would be much less than than having the flu. So it is scary, right? And being a mom myself and uh, you see all this and you worry what's going to happen to your kids. Chief Medical Officer of Dell Children's Medical Center, Dr. Mina Iyer says, Four out of five of their patients are testing positive for COVID-19 plus another illness. It's why she recommends children get vaccinated against COVID-19 and the flu. She says parents should know there aren't any risk getting them at the same time even if they have underlying health condition. It's very safe and we even advise that they can take it on the same day at the same time. She adds 90% of the infected patients are unvaccinated and a myth associated with vaccinations is that it will cause infections or give you the virus, but that's not true. The vaccine does not cause the infection, but you can get the infection even when you're vaccinated, but it's very, very mild and you get over it, you're not getting admitted, and there are no side effects to the vaccine. I just really hope the other parents seeing this broadcast, if they have the opportunity to vaccinate their kids, will do it. And with the CDC approving those 12 and over to get their COVID booster shots, the doctor says parents should take that as another opportunity to keep their children safe. Paige Hubbard reporting, CBS Austin News. President Biden on Tuesday meeting with his COVID task force and reacting to the same image as the rest of America is seeing. 
endless appearing lines at testing sites and students back at home for virtual learning. I'm testing. I know this remains frustrating. Believe me, it's frustrating to me. But we're making improvements. We asked the Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, about the shortage. Why do we still not have enough tests? Well, Scott, it's an important question, and I know that some people have had trouble. We do have uh, you know, enough testing available overall in the country, but we have, there are pockets uh, where the demand is certainly greater than the supply. We are working hard to fix that. Including, he says, setting up a federal website to send 500 million free tests to homes later this month. But in the meantime, the surge continues at pediatric hospitals, struggling with a record number of patients since more than 80 percent of kids age 5 to 11 still aren't vaccinated, renewing arguments over what's considered safe schooling. And you could condense classrooms and you could you know, put kids in cafeterias so you could, but is that really, are, are we doing our kids any favor at that point? That from Syracuse, where 250 staff were out Monday after testing positive or were exposed, but only 50 substitutes available, forcing closures. In Chicago, teachers voting on a possible walkout Wednesday, citing health concerns, though school officials called that a refusal to report to work. Yet others, like the nation's largest with one million students, New York City, staying open, doubling the number of random tests in schools. Your children are safer in school. If you take a child out of school, they're not staying home. They're not staying indoors. They're in the streets probably with no mask on, no social distancing. Transportation also impacted thousands of flights canceled in recent days with airline employees out sick. Other businesses delaying a return to office, so another renewed push for vaccinations and further fighting over how to stop the spread. How big of a failure have vaccine passports been? Okay, if vaccine passports succeeded, you would not see a lot of the stuff uh, that you're seeing in a lot of states that implemented them. Also, President Biden on Tuesday announced that he is doubling the nation's order from 10 million doses to now 20 million of Pfizer's new antiviral medication shown to reduce the number of hospitalizations and deaths among those infected. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman.